Hi everybody, Patty Ann here and hold on. I'm here today to show my daughter how she can use Inkscape to bring in a Harry Potter image, one of the castle that's pretty detailed, and bring it into Inkscape first and then into Cricut Design Space. So let's look down here at my computer. Okay, I'm not necessarily saying that anyone do exactly what I'm doing here because I'm not sure about this image right here and whether it's copyrighted or not, but this is what I would do. Okay, what I do is I would click on the image to get it to this size. And then if you'll notice here in the right hand corner, it says enter full screen. So I would do that next. And then I would right click on the image save picture as and I've done this before so I saved it as Hogwarts with tons of windows and I'll just save over top of that again since I've already done it okay the next thing I would do is I would open up Inkscape if I have not already done that before you need to download the free program called Inkscape and you just go to inkscape.org and there's a download and you can use it on a Mac or a PC. And once you've done that, then you will open up Inkscape. Whoops, let me get rid of this one that I've already done. Nah, to show you how. Okay, so what I would do now is I go to File, New. I'm gonna make it smaller so it fits within the parameters of my recording okay file and new and then I'm going to go up here to file import and I'm going to go to the place where I saved that and it was called Hogwarts with tons of windows I'm going to open that I'm going to leave this at embed from file and for image rendering mode, I'm going to say smooth and OK. So it comes in like this. Ignore this. This is just a canvas. Doesn't do anything. I'm going to make it a little larger so I can see it more clearly. You know what? I think. Yeah, that's fine like that. OK, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say trace bitmap. And then I get a window that looks like this on the PC. And I'm going to leave the brightness cut off just like it is because I tried it and it worked. I'm going to change the number of colors because all I really want are two colors. And the number of scans or the number of uh, pages I'm going to have, I just want two. Okay, so I'm going to say update. And then OK. And it did it. So I can X this out. Okay, so recall that I had it make two scans. This top one includes the background layer that we don't need. You see how there's that background layer? So I'm just going to highlight this and click delete on my keyboard. This is the only part that we need. And this is just one layer here. So now I'm going to come up here to File, Save As. And I'm going to save it and it automatically comes up as ink escape SVG. But I've been taught and I've learned that you use plain SVG. I'm not sure why, but it works. So I do it. So instead of using ink escape SVG, use plain SVG. I'm going to name it Hogwarts with tons of windows. Now I've already done this before, so it's already here, but I'll just save it over top of that one. So yes, I can replace it. So now I'm going to go into Cricut Design Space and I'm going to upload an image, that newest image. Now, like I said, I've done it before, so it's here, but let's pretend I haven't. I go to Upload. I find the image. Now here's the one with the background. If you'll notice when I hover over it, it says Item Type JPEG. That's not the one we want. That was the original one. If you look at the, the one right to the right of it with the same name, 
uh, it says something different. It says the file type of this one is an SVG file. Now your little icon might not look the same as mine here. This is because I have sure cuts a lot on my computer. But what you're concerned about is you don't want the one that says JPEG file. You want the one that says SVG file. So double click on that to open it. And there it is. And remember to put a tag in here so you can find it easily later. So I just put Harry Potter in mine. And I go save. And here it is. And I can insert it. And then I can make it bigger because I'm going to turn it sideways like this. I can make it as long as 24 inches because that's how long my mat is. Well, 23, let's say, just to be on the safe side. But the width can only be 11.5. So I'm going to make this 11.5 because our mats are 12 inches. But really, 11.5 is probably about what's available for us. Change that again. Try that again. Okay, so there it is. Whoa. Oh, I was looking at the rotate. Yes. So this is what it's going to be like. I think that's pretty darn cool. Okay, I clicked on make it. And when I do that, it does say that at least one of your images is larger than 11 and a half inches in height or width. And we know one of them is larger in height because I'm using the 12 by 24. So that's not a problem. So I can just say, it says, please click OK to continue with a larger mat. So that's what I'm going to do. Then I would go to continue and select my device. And it's as simple as that. So let's cancel this. And let's make a new project and replace it. And let's bring in one more image so I can quickly go through this procedure one more time. Okay, I want to show you how easy it is to know which layer you really should keep. I just brought in or imported this little dog. I think he's adorable. Maybe you're getting a little tired of Harry Potter. So here's a little dog here, and I'm going to keep him. He's my original on the left. I'm going to right click him and say trace bitmap. And I'm going to leave brightness cut off on smooth on and stack scans. So I'm going to say uh, OK. And I can get rid of this box for right now. And now I'm going to take the top one off, which is my original. And I want to show you the difference. You see this little box over here? When I take the original one and move, uh -oh. when I take the original one and put it over there, you see how the box covers it? He's not transparent. You cannot see the box through him. He's the original one. Now, if I take this one here and move him over, look how you can see him through him. He's transparent. He is the one that we want. He's the vector one that we want. Another way you can tell, though, is this. Let me move him over. Let me first go into this guy here. And I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. And I want you to see how pixelated Okay he actually is. Well, anyway, look right there. You can see how pixelated it is. Look around the dots and see all this extra gray jazz around here. This was our original image. This will be the one we want to get rid of. If we go over here and find the other fellow, look at his little dots. Still sharp and crisp. This is the one we want. This is the vector image. This is the SVG file. So, we're going to do that. We're going to click on this guy over here. Whoops, we got to get the arrow tool. Click on him and delete him. We're going to save this fellow over here. I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm just going to save him as Puppy. And remember, we don't want to save it as Inkscape SVG, but we want to save it as plain SVG. So that's it. That kind of tells you how you know which one of those um, layers to keep. Generally, you get rid of the top layer and keep the bottom layer.